So uh, when we started it off, we I think we put a very small fifty thousand or one lakh rupee marketing budget in the first couple of months, but the orders shot up like crazy. I think in two months we were doing about hundred fifty, I think close to two hundred orders a day. Uh, right. Sort of you know uh, surprised us completely, and you know we thought that we are onto something. And then over the next one year, when COVID happened, uh, we worked more on the uh, or more on the menu, uh, menu building, and you know figuring out what we, what uh, people want, uh, what eighty percent of the market wants. So we. today's special uh, my name is ketan and uh, today we have a very very special guest uh, sumit from uh, call show 2 he is the founder of passion restaurants hi sumit welcome to the show hi ketan excited to be here likewise likewise uh, just before we get started for a, a lot of people who don't know you the few that who don't know you uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself passion restaurants uh, the restaurants the brands that you're running okay Uh, so I started my entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurial journey in 2008 uh, when I started the restaurant called Spice Market at Saket. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a third generation restaurateur. My family oh. the Gulati is at Pandara Road uh, since 1959. Um, and I, after running this restaurant for about eight nine years, uh, you know, at Saket, uh, I wanted to you know uh, expand into cloud kitchens uh, because I think in 2016 2017. Uh, the online delivery space was really booming, and you know it was a, a good scalable uh, sort of a platform. Uh, if you have already, if you had a you know established brand, so uh, I worked on that project for about a year or so, and then we finally opened our first cloud kitchen in two thousand nineteen April, uh, about a year before COVID. And uh, uh, initially, the cloud kitchen was just serving Spice Market, which was a high uh, high AOV or high ticket size brand. Mm-hmm. a couple of months down the line we we added three more brands uh, to our cloud kitchen uh, first was uh, call chotu uh, which was our uh, you know our uh, take on you know uh, providing the services of a home cook uh, to uh, to every household uh, yeah. the price points are very comfortable uh, i think dishes starting at 80 90 bucks uh, most i think 80% of the menu was below 250 um, so you know more like everyday pricing everyday you know uh, use Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the a uh, couple of other brands that we are also running uh, since then is uh, one is yours truly butter chicken which is you know a take on customized but butter chicken you know you heard that ad mera wala pink so yes delhi mein i think everybody has a mera wala butter chicken That's kisi true. ko spicy chahiye kisi ko slightly sweetish kisi yeah. ko you know thoda thick gravy if somebody likes a patla gravy Uh, so we have about six, seven kinds of uh, butter chicken, and they can be further customized on the spice level or the cut of meat, you know. Right. And the fourth brand that we have in our portfolio is uh, Nayi Delhi ke Parathe, which is a, a breakfast lunch heavy brand. Uh, yeah. It gives you the option to make your own paratha, choosing from different kinds of doughs, achar, butter, stuffing, all the all the all sorts of options. Uh, yeah, it's like a subway of paratha, you can say. Uh, you know, <laughs> nice uh, way of putting so, it. So, yeah. So, uh, we expanded these four brands during COVID to a couple of more locations in two thousand twenty one and twenty two. Uh, now we are at uh, seven locations. Uh, six are cloud. Uh, at uh, six of these locations, we run all the four brands. And uh, the seventh location is just uh, it's a new diner that we've opened uh, for Paul Chotu. Uh, I think Paul Chotu expanded. Uh, and uh, grew way beyond our expectations and uh, the you know the, the the product market fit as they say was massive uh, people uh, you know were, we were we had the repeat rate was very very high and uh, we felt we had something you know in our hands that could be really really you know expanded so we finally i think after 5 years of running call show to we decided to bring it to an offline space uh, we opened nice. an all day diner uh, And same prices, uh, but a nice premium uh, dining space. Uh, you know where you don't you don't mind going uh, for a date or an office meeting right. or just an or just a uh, single lunch or going with family. You know, and go any time of the day, uh, right. from morning eleven a.m. to one in the night. I think we'll soon open for breakfast as well. And that has been the response to that has been great in the last three four months. Right. Uh, Then I think uh, that's when we uh, first started using Relo first, and uh, I think in end of May or June when we opened this diner, because right. we had some direct interaction with the customers, you know, 
So we wanted to have a strong loyalty program and uh, yeah. we wanted to, um, uh, you know, also uh, take uh, a record as to how, what was the repeat rate and, you know, um, right. so yeah, uh, we, it's been a great journey uh, with, the, with the pivot from Spice Market initially and then now entirely focused on Call Show 2 has been, you know, a massive for us. And uh, looking nice. forward to you know, scaling up uh, Call Show 2 mainly and then other brands also eventually, you know, over the next few years. Right, right. So, uh, happy to hear. And I know that you have some expansion plans uh, in the offing. I've, I've seen your Instagram game. and you Sorry, Ketan, I, I lost you. I, I lost you. I couldn't, I couldn't get what you no, said. No problem. So I'm saying that, you know, uh, I've seen your Instagram handles for Call Show 2. And I'm seeing that uh, you guys have put out teasers of new locations. So I kind yeah. of guessed where you're coming next, but I leave that to you. <laughs> I knew you personally as ten, have 10 years of experience running, uh, uh, in the, being in the food business, right? But the it's Gulati... 17, 17 years now, yeah. Yeah, 17 years, right? But you come with a lot of lineage, right? So, I mean, Gulati, who doesn't know Gulati is at Pandara Road, right? And uh, the only thing that people, I think, uh, in different parts of the country, everybody has their butter chicken, their chole bhature, their dosas, their missiles, right? So, everybody has, you know, their go-to place. So, it's a very interesting concept that you have. Thank you. Yeah, and and so now with coming to call Shoto, right? And the and the uh, the core of the topic that we want to talk about today, which is third party online delivery, right? And festival season is around. So five years you've run call Shoto as an internet kitchen, right? As a cloud kitchen before you decided yes. to go like for a dine in, you know, brick yes. and mortar. So in yeah. these five years, uh, how important have Swiggy and Zomato been for your business uh, as a as a growth partner? <laughs> Uh, you know, online is pretty much uh, as a matter of fact, is all we have. You know, uh, I think we, uh, we, customers generally have made it very clear they are not interested in ordering from your from a website. Hmm. Uh, you know, aggregators. You mean your own website? Uh, yeah, from your own website. Ah. Aggregators are extremely important, but not just for food. But I look at uh, in D2C, Amazon, Flipkart. You know, people every everybody prefers ordering from Amazon, Flipkart over going to a a new uh, brand's own website. So yeah. Zomato Swiggy is uh, extremely important for online delivery. We scaled up our brands completely on online on, on Zomato and Swiggy, you know, uh, right. so last four or five years. Uh, direct, like I said, uh, we just started expanding uh, this brand into uh, into offline uh, channels now mm. uh, after we had a strong product market fit. Right. Awesome. And I, and I remember reading somewhere or watching one of your interviews where you said that you started with 150, 200 orders with a, you know, a 1 lakh marketing budget. But now you've scaled it to about 50,000. Is that so, right? So hmm. we um, built Call Chotu as a, as a universal brand, you know, where anybody and everybody should be able to order, you know, every day from the brand. Like from Rajma Shawal to Momos to right. Vada Pao or, you know, Pao Bhaji, you know. Uh, butter chicken, dal, you know, I, I mean, every, every, every day kind of comfort meal that, that you may want is there on call show too, you know? Right. right. So, uh, yeah, over the last five years now, we've reached a point, I think call show two is doing um, uh, close to 2000 orders every day. So wow. uh, with all the locations, um, uh, congratulations. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that's, um, uh, been the journey for the last few years. Right. And, and I just want to reemphasize that this has largely been on the back of uh, third-party delivery platform, right? So Swiggy and Zomato yeah, is a big key role here. And we, we, when we started off at that time, uh, you know, we had our own hybrid delivery also on Zomato. Like the orders would come through Zomato and we would deliver through our own riders as well, some of them. Right. As we scaled up, we realized it's it's not practically possible to manage your own uh, fleet, you know, of 100, 150 riders. I mean, right. so uh, the scalability comes from the fact that you don't have to look at the logistics. All you have to do is uh, you know, uh, get the order on your system, which right. comes to, uh, you know, online integrations, order lands in front of the chef and 15 minutes, uh, the order is ready. It's packed and it's right. handed over to the and your work is done. Okay. You don't have to answer the customer beyond that. After that, the you know, the Zomato or Swiggy customer care handles the, you know, coordination of the logistics. If a customer wants to know right. where the order is, they can see it on, see on the app. Right. And, and I think one of the greatest things that has happened with Zomato and Swiggy is that, you know, if you called up a restaurant and placed an order, uh, you almost always had to call them sometime later and ask, bhaiya, mera order kaha hai? And the answer would be, bhaiya, yes, ladka nikal chuka hai time. Yeah, absolutely. I'll give you a stat. I think 2020 or 21, uh, when we were maybe one, 
I think in terms of order volume, we were probably at uh, one fifth or one seventh of what we are now. Right. We had 25 riders in one kitchen and six order takers handling the phone. And okay. the wow. riders were only handling 40% of the orders. 60% was still hand being handled by you know the aggregators. So wow. imagine uh, how much manpower, uh, you know, the number of order takers and riders which uh, we had. And then it's a headache to really, honestly, it's a headache to manage so many riders, you know. I mean, so right. they don't have an incentive to, they're on a salary, right? They, they, don't, they don't have an incentive to uh, come back fast and, you know, take the next order. Sometimes we right. had to really send somebody after them, they don't park in the park, you know. <laughs> so it, it was really that um, crazy. So that model, uh, really, we, yeah, we figured that that model is definitely not scalable. You can't be, you know, trying to track your riders, ke kahan pohunche, kahan chale rahe, you know, our right. order baad, aadha hanta break leke rahe. Amazing, amazing. Interesting story. Um, so so now, and we were just talking about this uh, earlier, right? That when I open up Zomato, I see that in my area, there are 2,500 restaurants delivering yeah. to my location, right? Now, 2,500 locations, are, I mean... It's unfathomable. Kaha restaurants, I don't even know, right? Some of them. Yeah. As a as a as a internet uh, kitchen or a cloud kitchen, how do you make sure that you know you're seen? Well, how does how do you do that on Zomato and Swiggy? See, it's a blend. Uh, I think a certain amount of orders you're going to get from the organic search. Like mm. if you you have your top five restaurants that are, that you like that you frequently order from. You don't uh, need to uh, go through Zomato to discover them. You're going to open Zomato or Swiggy and you're going to search the name of that restaurant and go straight to that page, you know? Right. That, that's an organic, uh, you know, visit. Uh, so about, I mean, I would say if a brand is doing well, 50 to 60% of your, you know, orders are coming from your regular customers who are directly right. searching for you. For your new, right. for, uh, for new customers or for not so frequent, uh, you know, uh, repeat customers, you need to obviously, uh, you know, uh, take help uh, from the platforms and use their CPC uh, cost per click ads. Uh, right. Those are very important, uh, you know, because they uh, you know, put you on the top. I think currently now, uh, I don't know about other cities, but Delhi, Bombay and the top two, three, four cities where there are thousands of restaurants. I think top 40, 50 are, are uh, listings that you see when you mm -hmm. scroll, scroll down, uh, they're all ads. They're all boosted by CPC. So right. if you're advertising... Uh, you pretty much have to depend on completely on, uh, you know, organic uh, search by customers, right. which only do either if they have tried your brand before or they've seen you, they've seen you in a physical space somewhere or, you know, they know, they know of you already. Right. So, uh, but uh, you have to rely on CPC, you know, to get your 40, 45, 50% of the business. Okay, uh, that's important, huh? That's a yeah, big part. Yeah, that's very important. So most people, I think, when they open a cloud kitchen, they feel that we'll cloud kitchen, kholenge, we'll put a, uh, we'll uh, go live on Zomato, mm -hmm. so again, orders will start flowing. Hmm. Let me tell you, somebody, somebody in um, in Zomato or uh, Swiggy, I can't remember. A couple of years they told me, one, and then I, that was a, a very interesting stat. And eighty percent of the restaurants that are there on Zomato and Swiggy, they don't even get ten orders a day. Oh wow! Okay. So imagine. Uh, eighty percent or ninety percent of the business is driven driven by the top 10 20 percent of the restaurants. You know. Okay. So that's that's how you know uh, tough it is to get an order. So you don't right. the cloud kitchen and expect the orders or You have to obviously work on building your uh, building your, uh, the brand reach uh, through CPCs and of course your your CPC or ads will only take you as far. Uh, ultimately, repeat customers will only come if your product offering is you know. Uh, is uh, strong is better than competition right. right and and i think you are a very well placed uh person to tell us that you know because your orders literally went from 150 a month to about 2000 which is a little more than 10 times the order right literally 10x yeah, it's, it's taken you some time years. to get there but if somebody's starting today right they're starting a cloud kitchen what do they need to do i mean yeah obviously good food is very very important uh but what are the other things that they need to keep <laughs> in mind uh, when they're running, uh, see hmm. you, have, you have to you have to understand that when you open a physical restaurant, what do you what do you uh, uh, how how do you open a restaurant? You do good interiors, you have good service, hmm. you know you have a nice looking menu, right? Yeah. So, uh, so now if you uh, uh, put all of these things into a cloud kitchen format, that customer is only interacting with you with you through the Zomato Swiggy menu. 
So you have to exactly show what you are going to be sending, you know, right. uh, preferably in the similar kind of packaging or, you know, as I said, a photo is showing you, you know, it's like a fine dining, five star type of food and food is coming in white, you know, that, that, that doesn't work. You have to show like whole experience. You know, a, a relatable picture. Uh, mm-hmm. The description has to be very clear, okay, what this dish is about, what is the portion like, yeah. you know, you have to have add-ons or variants, you know. Um, and then of course, uh, I mean, if you have good ratings that obviously that helps customers always rely on, you know, what other people are talking about, you know, but that's right. exactly in your hand other than the fact that you have to deliver a you know, good experience to your customers. Right, right. So ratings is something that I want to talk to you about a little bit at length, but maybe we'll park that for a little later. But yeah. so when I, when I hear this, it sounds obvious that there should be a good picture. There should be a description. Yeah. But yeah, now yeah, you yeah, a majority, a majority are not doing that. Hmm. And and when you say it, and I look back at my own experience ordering, if I don't say a description, I and if the restaurant's the in thing, I will actually not order from there because I don't know what I, what to expect, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you don't want to spoil your meal. Uh, you know, you want to be certain about what you're going to get. Uh, it's like right. uh, when you go to Amazon, you know, uh, you see ki uski photos, kya hai, description, kya hai, what are the ratings like, you know. Hmm. Without that, you're not going to place an order. Right. And and uh, uh, so one is CPC, right? Getting your basics in place because it seems that everybody has the same level platform. Everybody has access to the same tools. Somebody might have a higher marketing budget. Somebody might have a team dedicated to optimizing for Zomato. So if somebody yeah. starting, right? What are the essentials that they need to look at? Yeah, good pictures, description, the whole last mile experience has to be great. But what can they do on the platform? Uh, what do you mean by what can they do by uh, as in the essential? These are hygiene factors, right? Basic hygienes. Yeah, basic hygiene. I think exactly what I said. The description, photographs, and you know, and also dish ratings are very important nowadays. I think when you're talking about that, dish that, ratings. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah like uh, I think now it's not, not only a page rating, but if you open any restaurant, you'll see every dish has a rating. Right. So, you know, it tells me if a, if a, suppose a, a certain dish has uh, five ratings. Uh, and it's uh, say 4.5. It's not as relevant to me as another dish which has 100 ratings, but it's even 4.1. You know, right. uh, so that means more more people are ordering that dish. You know, right. Uh, so it gives me an idea of you know what the popular dishes are of this restaurant. Right. And and uh, how do you get people? To, how do you get more people to review you? Right. You know, it's very hard. That, that that's something which is extremely hard. I think for for new and upcoming restaurants or brands. I think a handwritten note uh, is something, you know, a handwritten slip or a post-it is something that I've seen that it works a lot. Uh, beyond right. that, uh, you can, you can, you know, obviously put it on your packaging, reviewers, or, you know, put a, mm. put some sort of a reminder, but it's still very hard. You know, I think typically 8 to 10% of the orders is the max you'll get ratings on. Okay. 8 to 10%. Yeah, that's the oh. max. I think, and when you have high repeat customers, mm. uh, it probably goes down to 5, 6% only. So, okay. you know. Uh, yeah, so uh, I mean, what is important is that you have to try your best to not get negative ratings. You know, <laughs> with positive ratings, may I mean, happy customers, it's very hard to motivate them to give a rating. Right. So somebody is orders from you every week, they are not, they are not going to give you a rating every week. You know. Right. No, that's true. But that's if somebody true. ordered five or six times and they have one yeah. bad experience, that that's the time they are going to go and write a review. You know. So, yes. Uh, so yeah, it's it's you have to make sure that you know, keep your negative ratings as low as possible. Uh, you know, and keep a check as to why uh, you're getting the negative rating. Is it a wrong order? Is it a uh, is it a wrong wrong dish served? Is it uh, you know uh, a, some sort of a, a mix up uh, or a missing item or you know if right. there's an issue, then you make make sure you work on these things. Right, and there will always be a bunch of these uh, reviewers who are blaming the restaurant for a delay in delivery. Right, so you, there's nothing you could have done about it possibly. So do you have like a benchmark of say 
टू परसेंट से ज्यादा रिव्यूज अगर नेगेटिव है देन इट्स अ कॉज फॉर कंसर्न एंड स्पेसिफिक आई थिंक 1 एंड 1/2 टू परसेंट इज 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 यू नो इज समथिंग व्हिच इज व्हिच यू व्हिच यू गोइंग टू गेट यू कांट मेक एवरीबॉडी हैप्पी बट इफ यू 3 4 5% नेगेटिव रिव्यूज यू नो कंपेयर्ड टू द टोटल ऑर्डर्स सर्वड राइट दैट ऑब्वियसली इज अ लार्मिंग नंबर यू नो सो try to keep it less than 2% for sure okay and also keep your you know kitchen preparation time in check because the delay is not only uh, because of the rider you know at times at mm-hmm. times it is not preparing the you know food on time so uh, we use digital kots to you know uh, those kitchen display screens so yeah. i actually know you know uh, next day or kon se orders late hue the how long you know which order took so mm-hmm. manage the peaks better uh, you know instead instead of printed kots Printed QOT आती है कई बार यू नो दे डोंट इवन द स्टाफ डजंट इवन पुट देम इन द राइट ऑर्डर ओके सो दैट इज ऑब्वियसली यू नो नॉट द बेस्ट वे टू इफ यू आर इफ यू आर इनटू अ हाई वॉल्यूम यू नो ऑर्डर बिजनेस अंडरस्टूड एंड वंस यू गेट दिस नेगेटिव रिव्यूज एज अ रेस्टोरेंट एंड ऑब्वियसली यू कैन सी दिस नेगेटिव रिव्यूज ऑन योर लिस्टिंग या हाउ डू यू एड्रेस दिस एज इन इज देयर अ वे टू टेल द कस्टमर दैट यू नो वी आर सॉरी अबाउट दिस बट वी हैव काइंड ऑफ फिक्स्ड इट you know you you i mean you can reply and you should reply but mm-hmm. i wish i wish the aggregators had a better way uh, for restaurants to reach out to these customers because right. you know sometimes you know the pe- people write very vague comments like you know oh i didn't like the food oh, okay but, or what, what did you not like what was the issue what is it the taste was it a spice level you know uh, i wish yeah. i could you know, speak to the customer a little more yeah uh, um i will mean, get more details uh, about you know their issues um so yeah uh, currently that there is a limitation there you know the aggregators don't allow for us to speak to the customers we can re- reply to the review but even if you reply you know you leave a email to please write to us i think right 90% of the customers unhappy customers are not going to bother you know writing to you you know with all the details on whatsapp or email right right i i think we'll f- figure out a way of sending this to dipinder and shri harsha some <laughs> send this clip to them and uh, we we been in touch with them about these i think they uh, i've been hearing that something is uh, something is coming up for the last 6 months uh, okay. that they will allow some sort of a mutual chat or uh, you know uh, some way to reach out to the customer but it's not happened yet yeah uh, i mean i hope it's coming soon yeah yeah knowing their their speed of uh, shipping feature updates i'm sure they're doing a going to do a great job Yeah, uh, I yeah, want to yeah. come yes. back to this um, uh, marketing uh, and spend right especially now that diwali is around the corner and a lot of people are looking at these platforms to help boost business um if i were a kitchen if i were a single outlet kitchen for instance right yeah uh, uh, what what do you think is a good marketing budget to get started with a uh, single brand single single outlet i think 40 yeah. to 50 thousand is is what you should uh, you know think of spending a half on zomato half on swiggy or maybe 60 40 depending upon you know uh, uh-huh. in your area, which 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 aggregator is stronger in your area right uh, uh, but like i think before you start investing this money best is to to make sure that your funnel is you know a uh, strong as in you know uh, okay. the customer or ordering from you uh, how many people are visiting your page how many are building a cart and how many are actually placing the order make sure your pricing right. your offer your photos all of those you know things basic hygiene is you know is, is in place so for a couple of months uh, track your funnel you can get the funnel data from zomato and swiggy they okay. they share with you uh, you know of how many people opened the page how many built the card and how many placed the order you know so that funnel tell, tells you uh, ke, you know so log aapke page pe aaye usme se kitne logon ne actually kiya you know okay. if your conversion is not good uh what good is going to be what what good will the ad do ad is only going to, ad is only going to bring people to your page but if your conversion ratio is not strong then what's the point you know right uh, of spending on ads right so yeah okay. just, and and what according to is a good money. conversion ratio i mean depends sorry, on sorry. the it depends on the i think on the cuisine and the price points but higher price point brands i think 10 10% plus is good for lower price point brands you know uh, for mass market brands i think 16 17 18% conversion is healthy okay. but uh, but you have to understand that you know uh, seeing the conversion in isolation doesn't work you have to you know um, also uh, see this data over a period of time because uh, sometimes the, the there's a rider issue that people open the page they want to place an order but they add the payment uh, payment key uh, 
at stage, the writer was not available and the order got dropped out. So okay. it depends your funnel, but it was not your uh, your brand's fault, right? Uh, so uh, yeah, you just have to rule out those, you know, exceptions and uh, see this data over a period of two or three months to make sense of it. Okay. So two or three months is when you, you I mean, it's the least that minimum that you should expect before uh, the results start showing in. Yeah, I think you know, I think it was a matter of when you open a open a new page, you're not going to have a rating for the first two months. It says new, you know, instead of rating. Okay. Uh, so till you get a till you get a, a rating live, uh, I don't think you should spend too much on advertising. Maybe ten thousand, five thousand per month, not more than that. Just, right. uh, just test out your product and you know just to get get an initial feeler as to how the brand is doing. Uh, obviously, and uh, you want to give your uh, give your uh, team uh, those that. Uh, the time in the initial teething phase. As I said, day one, you know, you hired a new person, 10 days may train away, and then, you know, 11th day, they have to handle 100 orders a day. They don't want to be able yeah. to do that. And, yeah. you know, obviously you, you have to ensure that negative ratings will be far worse than, you know, uh, in the long run. So right. build your business slowly, gradually, you know, um, uh, whatever is your uh, uh, optimum level, like everybody does the math, right? That you many costs and this is my expected revenue from this outlet. And say uh, uh, my expected revenue is hundred, and I'm going to reach there then uh, in month four or month five. Mm -hmm. Let's see, each of the first month, let let me try to try to get a fifteen. Second month, let me try to get a twenty five or a thirty. Third month, let me get a sixty. You know, so right. gradually give your time, uh, give your team uh, time to you know sort of uh, get used to the uh, to the volume. Um, you know, uh, and make sure you are uh, seeing the ratings and the reviews and. Uh, the feedback closely, see your kitchen preparation time, you know, uh, if uh, that's not too high, high kitchen preparation time, preparation time, you know, puts your listing, you know, uh, down in the algorithm uh, because, you know, the delivery time uh, to the end user becomes very high because of that. Right, right. right. And you know, all these things before you really push, you know, a higher marketing budget. Okay, great. Okay, so now coming back to the main, the core is which is around the festival season, right? So I want to yeah. understand what is it that you guys are doing? What has worked for you in the past while working with these platforms in terms of specifically festival season, right? And in India, usually second half of the year is when all the festivals start coming together. You know, there are back to back, Eid, yeah. Diwali, Christmas, whatever, right? So what do you, what, what do you plan? How do you plan this? How do you go about it? So I uh, honestly, the, this is a very tricky period uh, the, as, per, as per my experience. Hmm. Uh, why I say tricky is because, you know, uh, say October, this 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 month, October first week was Navratras. Yeah. First and second October was extremely busy because Navratras is going to start. So people, you know, uh, order, uh, go out and order and everything, you know, for the first two days. Then there there's seven, eight days of, you know, uh, I mean, you know, of... Uh, Dip in, uh, you see a dip in the business uh, for seven eight days during Navratras, right. and then uh, you you think you are going to see a peak, so you maybe you push your advertising uh, advertising budgets uh, at that time. But what also happens is that you know uh, because there are so many restaurants at that time pushing ads on the matter swiggy that you may not get the desired results. You know, uh, right. may not get the desired ROI. Uh, in fact, last one or two years, I've noticed this two or two days before Diwali were actually as uh, slow as any any weekday where you think you're going to get a very high peak but you yeah. didn't because the riders were not available at that time or riders were split between too many restaurants you know right uh, and then diwali most restaurants are closed on diwali which is actually the the busiest day of the year you know uh, okay. i mean more than new years honestly because um, the, the the supply of restaurants is so low most restaurants are shut on diwali so you know yeah. Uh, and the demand is massive. I think I would, demand is more than New Year's, um, uh, but uh, New Year's ends, ends up being a higher revenue period because obviously everybody's open that day. You know, nobody right. talks about the, the revenue you can make on the Diwali day. Okay. Then after right after Diwali, a lot of riders go to their hometowns for Chhat Puja, or some of them go uh, start attempting in weddings as a, as a waiter. So you you see actually again a dip during you know uh, the two three weeks after mm -hmm. Diwali. So you have to smartly plan your ad budgets uh, that, you know, uh, pushing a high ad budget for the entire two, three months of October, November, December is absolutely, you know, not advisable because okay. uh, if the riders are not there, if your radius is small at that time, 
uh, what's the point of putting a high ad budget? You know, you'd rather right. stay clean and, you know, um, and and uh, for, uh, keep your budgets for those, you know, uh, one or two weeks of peaks in between. Right, right. So uh, pre-Diwali, right? I mean, and I, when I say pre-Diwali, I mean any time after the Shara. From that time till Diwali, there are a lot of these house parties that happen. Yeah. Uh, lot of parties. Pretty much every day of the week is something, right? Especially in the north. Uh, yeah. some, to some extent in the west and south also. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of activity, people meeting, a lot of socializing and all. So in that time, right, I think that is the time, like you said, two days before Diwali is great, but on Diwali is not. So that 21 day period pre Diwali, oh, and I'm just talking about two, Diwali. Two days right? before Diwali may not be as good. The Diwali day is good. But oh, okay. uh, for, to, to prepare for Diwali, I think um, uh, you must have good, you know, party packages or snack mm -hmm. platters, say uh, okay. combos of two, three snacks, you know, yeah. those the large festive combos because uh, people are you know uh, in the mood to place large orders and right. uh, while they can uh, order three portions of the same starter but uh, I, I think it's human psychology if you see an option of 18 pieces instead of six piece you're more likely to order an 18 piece you know uh, starter rather than three into right. a six six so right. it's uh, it's a good idea to have you know um snack uh, snack box uh what do you call it uh snack boxes platters. and you know party boxes at that time for sure right okay so larger platters uh be smart about your marketing budget yeah, um, yeah larger option variants like you know when you suppose you have a pizza i think a lot of restaurants do that right you have 8 inch when you select that you have the option of you know uh upgrading to the 10 inch or 12 inch right Similarly, in Indian gravies or in Chinese main course, when you're ordering a single portion, you know, you should smartly add the option of making it, you know, one and a half times the portion. Okay. So th that will help you, you know, increase uh, your order, average order value. Right, right. And um, within pages, I have not seen uh, the option where you can customize your offers or communication, right? Uh, so it largely comes down to consumers knowing that, you know, a, a call Chotu has very well defined menu, very well defined portions. Uh, they're very clear on what to expect. Plus the last mile experience is always great, right? So if somebody is starting and let's say this is the time, right? From now till New Year's. Um, is, is there some support you get from Zomato and Swiggy of how to maximize sales, how to go about, what can you yeah. optimize on? Yeah, of course. I think uh, you must talk to your account manager as to what's, what's uh, you know, um, uh, what's running in your area. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not uh, the same solution for every location. Okay. Uh, our manager is best, you know, suited to, you know, help you with that. Uh, there are those uh, coupon codes that you can, you know, uh, that you can apply, like there's a Diwali or a party code, you know, which have a slightly higher discount, a higher right. discount, a flat 175 or a flat 250 on a higher uh, minimum order value. So these, these kind of coupons, uh, coupon codes, uh, you know, give you a much higher visibility you know, on these uh, apps. Like if you go to Zomato or Swiggy, you'll, you'll see this, you know, party or a Diwali, you know, a section. Uh, right. Zomato has a dedicated bulk order, you know, section. Uh, so when you when you open that, uh, you're only going to see restaurants which are participating in that discount code, you know. Oh, okay. So you, you need to, uh, you know, consider these discount codes, uh, you know, in, in the same light as your advertisement budgets. You know, okay. that uh, with, without, without that, Without uh, discount codes, it's very hard to, you know, promote a brand completely online. Then you are dependent on, you know, your branding in physical space or offline or, you know, um, or, 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 or building your brand outside these platforms. Right. So so discounts is one way, right? And typically when you're offering the discount, the restaurant is paying for it, technically, right? Um, is there yeah. another way that you can get more customers, more repeat customers, especially during this time? which is not by giving discounts. What um, other offers can you think of? I think uh, these platforms have some loyalty programs uh, mm -hmm. that you can buy, uh, I think five five coupons for a certain amount, you know, for a very small something. Okay. Um, and the restaurant doesn't have to pay a uh, shell out too much, you know, um, uh, for these uh, loyalty uh, coupons. Uh, mm -hmm. So those, those are very good. And... Uh, I mean, I think at, uh, if you have a decent budget, you should reach out to your uh, uh, account manager and see, you know, if you can participate in offline activities as well. Like they have these newspaper ads coming where they feature, you know, 
uh, top 20 brands of, of every area or top 10 brands of every area. You should talk about, you know, talk to your account manager about participating in these offline activities. Okay. And and, and these offline activities, uh, how much lead time do you typically get for these? Uh, I think about a couple of weeks before the Diwali season. Uh, so right. you should, it's, it's uh, now it's already, it's a bit late, but you can still uh, probably, you know, get, um, uh, get some sort of a promotion, you know, participation in some promotion, you know, for next week, uh, for say 23rd to 30th, which is going to be the one week leading up to Diwali. I think uh, you can still uh, sign up with some of these now. Right, right. Um, so I sort of what I'm hearing from you is that, you know, if you start now, it's kind of late, but you can still try something. But don't approach festival seasons like any other time. You, you've you got to put in a couple of months of work before it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Get your basics in place. Talk to your account manager. Make sure that you have great pictures, great offers. Talk to your account manager about coupon codes. Make sure that you're getting a good deal if you're spending money um, and things like that. And don't depend. And, and, and these insights like, you know, the validity is going to be crazy. Not maybe, maybe not good for business, but a couple of days before, 21 days before, especially yeah. and after the Wali, you know, people always say that are we, you know, too much calories in the Wali. I'm going to take mm -hmm. a break and then, you know, get ready for new year's. So that's another time, which is maybe low. Uh, you can get, you can get prepped for it. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, this is, this is phenomenal, right? Um, as consumers, I have never thought of these things, but now that you're saying, you know, I go back to my experiences and I'm like, yeah, lots of times you go to a restaurant and they're like, oh, they're not taking orders right now or they're closed for delivery. Um, and there's nothing you can do about it, right? You either call the restaurant directly. And in many cases, they just tell us, Ki, sir, Zomato se order karlo ya Swiggy se order karlo because we don't have riders. And yeah. Question I, think it, 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 I mean, it's, it's a good idea to keep uh, two, three riders of your own at every, lo every location to cater to bulk orders at this time, right. you know? Right. So, uh, because um, I think you all ideally you should start promoting bulk orders a month or two before uh, Diwali comes because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, maybe maybe by putting a slip uh, on the carry bag or something like right. that, that for bulk orders, you know, contact us. Right. Uh, right. And right. That's, a, that's a good, you know, a good idea if you uh, have the option because you don't want to miss out on bulk orders, you know, if there's a, as a matter so we don't have riders available, you know. At right. The right. So at least, yeah, you should, you must prepare for that. And now I think Zomato has come up with large fleets for large orders, right? Especially yeah. since I saw a couple of pictures. Um, do you do you see a lot of large and bulk orders coming your way through these platforms? Uh, not as many as I would we would like, but yeah, I think I think it's uh, hopefully uh, their 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 focus is just to come on bulk orders now. Or recently, uh, one or two months back, so I'm I'm sure you know we are going to start seeing more bulk orders very soon. Okay, and is there? Anything you do differently to promote bulk orders, or it's the same? See, uh, I think uh, I think similar to what you said, uh, like uh, what you what you can do other than having a discount. What you can do is you can do you can bundle different dishes together. You have to hmm. understand that if there's a bulk order. You're going to spend less on packaging. You know, less on you know if you say. Uh, agar aapko dal heat karni hai, aap 500 ml karo, or you do or you heat one liter. Your gas cost is not going to change much. Right, okay. uh, manpower cost is not going to change much, so right. it's a good idea to sell the to sell a bigger variant, hmm. uh, you know, uh, for a slightly lower uh, lower price uh, per ml. I mean, no, obviously not uh, it's actually the lower price, but right. uh, give a better value to your customers when they place a bigger order. So hmm. that way they feel that you know uh, instead of ordering for five people, if I'm ordering for ten people, I'm you know I'm going to get a big better saving. And so these, right. these, uh, these kind of combos or, you know, um, bundles to bundles um, will obviously help you, you know, uh, achieve a higher ticket size or get these bulk orders. Okay. Okay. And uh, would you say that um, in all the time that you worked with them and you now with five years of call show to you've seen five festival seasons, right? Uh, yeah. Do you see your marketing budget go up during this time? Uh, and what happens to the ROI? Do you see a healthy ROI now? Uh, I think like, like I said, uh, first two, three years, uh, we, we made a mistake. We gave a higher budget for the entire October, November, December. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we learned from our mistake because they, within this these three months also, there are those peaks and lows. Okay. So now we have a dynamic budget that, of course, there's a certain monthly budget. And then we top up the budget uh, for say, two weeks uh, before Diwali or two, three weeks before New Year's. 
you know mm-hmm. uh, rest of the uh, rest of the weeks during these three months treat them as you know any month during the year because it's all right it's not peak for the entire three months oh okay so there are ebbs so there you are... have to see these small trends and you have right. to watch, watch your revenues and your data very closely almost every couple of days so that you know uh-huh. if you if this if the trend is changing if or if the riders are not there then you immediately you know save money you don't waste your ad budgets right right what about special campaigns specific campaigns because you typically may not have access to the customer data with that is with zomato and swiggy right how do you run festive campaigns then festive campaigns i think uh, see zomato swiggy the only way you can run a festive campaign is through by participating in those discount codes Mm-hmm. But if you don't want okay. to do that. Then you have to, you know, figure out a way to um, build your brand on Instagram or you know on on Facebook or offline. You know, maybe through right. flying. But I mean, from my experience, it it's it's very hard. It's better. It's actually cheaper to give us you know small uh, coupon code. Uh, you know, because ultimately that's going uh, that saving is uh, you know uh, to the end user. Right. If end user has a better value or better uh, you know. Um, Uh, experience um, obviously there will to be uh, there are more chances of them be- becoming a repeat customer right you, you spending on marketing a customer is not benefiting from that you know uh, you may of course you may get their attention but his value proposition is not changing so i feel that you know uh, that uh, that uh, you you need to have a strategy of how much discounting and figure out which are the right coupons and do have an incremental you know a uh, better offer for higher orders right and can you experiment with this on a weekly basis yeah yeah of course uh, i think figure out which coupon code works for you uh, track your funnel uh, with you know with that coupon code uh, right. see funnel changes for the better uh, you know um, hmm. your uh, menu to order conversion ratio if that improved majorly uh, ultimately that will help you reduce your ads so you know both okay. ads and discounts are going from your your own pocket right right so uh, when there is no point of you know not giving discount and then spending to ice the mountain ads right so but, okay. but again it, it, it's not it's not a uh, one solution that fits all kinds of concepts you have mm-hmm. to uh, you know do your uh, trials and you know uh, figure out what works for you best right so i mean it's all experimentation right but uh, i think you've done a phenomenal job with all choto taking it 10x uh, during i mean now it's a consistent number it's not just dependent on those 3 months to uh, run the business yeah. right you're doing it throughout the year so yeah i think uh, my my take away from this is that you have to be consistent at it and there are a few things you can do pre festive season but uh, don't necessarily depend on that you you'll have to up your game at all levels to be able to maximize say, 10x your Uh, yeah, no, you you going to, you're going to get that peak i'm just saying that you know watch watch when the peak is coming mm-hmm. don't think the entire three months are are a peak period you know uh, okay two two weeks before diwali you're going to get that peak you know have your uh, combos and ha- do give a higher budget and you know be ready for a higher orders and of course uh, make sure that your, your menu is uh, is uh, the menu hygiene is very good you have good photographs descriptions you know uh, the entire experience of somebody landing on your page to the cart it needs to be a great experience so yeah. those things are very very important you know first and foremost and then of course you know uh, the small tweaks like ad budget cpc all those things of course are great in boosting right add ons and you know things like that right um, i'm just looking at a couple of questions that have come uh, that are pertinent to the business as such not necessarily festivals but i'm just okay. going to read them out right and, uh, and i'd love to hear your perspective on these right So, so Rishit says that you know Swiggy and Zomato are price sensitive platforms and they give visibility if you pay them premium. Uh, if you deliver, if you consistently deliver quality, right, and do not pay for ads, ads, how do you set up? See, um, like I said, if you um, if you don't want to do ads, the only way you can build your brand is through offline. Hmm. Then use Zomato Swiggy as a channel to deliver. You know, where you're building your customers through your cafe or through through your restaurant. or being uh, being as a, being at a say being a qsr in a market your customers are getting uh, customers are noticing you they are they are uh, uh, you know they are uh, kind of interacting with your brand there and they end up using zomato swiggy as just a channel to order from you right. when you are at home you know but if you are a cloud kitchen uh, you there's no way you, you 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 can you know do without these ads okay 
if you oh. if you want to take the delivery uh, delivery segment or delivery vertical seriously you have to do ads but obviously how much ads is is something you know you can be careful about uh, when you start off your ad ad as a percentage of total revenue maybe 12 to 15% but mm. three months four months down the line uh, you know the same ad budget should get you much bigger revenue so your ad percentage should go down to maybe you know 6 7% or 5% eventually long term 3 or 4% you know, right, uh, and that happens because you know the uh, the ads get you the customer once, but <clears throat> if your offering is good, then they become a repeat customer, and for repeat customers, you don't have to spend on ads. Yeah. So, uh, so you start with a twenty five thousand ad budget. First month is going to get you a sixty seventy eighty thousand rupee revenue, and then next month, uh, how good your product uh, offering was, that will you know. Um, uh, that will uh, determine whether you you get a one lakh or a one and a half lakh or two lakh rupee revenue from the same ad budget. Right. If your and revenue is not increasing month on month with the same mm -hmm. ad budget, that means you have to first fix your product. First fix your product. That's okay. That's insightful. And when you give this percentage is five six percent of total, uh, is that part of your is that five six percent of your revenue or payout? Revenue. I mean, payout is pay, payout is after deducting the commission and the uh, you know, uh, in the ads. Right, right. So, I mean, interestingly, uh, I think Janak has a question around uh, the commission, right? He's like, they're charging a high fee ranging from 40 to 60%, uh, which ultimately makes it more expensive for consumers. How much? 40 then, to 60%. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Um, which eventually makes it more expensive for consumers in the low budget category. Um, so You have to understand, if you, if, you were, if you were running delivery on your own, how much would you pay your rider? You know, in a top metro, your, your rider salary and your uh, petrol and all of those things in combined, you, you know, you're going to pay about close to about 800 to 1000 bucks a day to your rider, you know, and he's going to do about seven or eight deliveries at max. Right. So you're going to spend 100 rupee, 150 rupee per order for sure on your delivery cost. Now, if you are a 300 rupee ticket size brand, imagine that's 33%, right? Or more than yeah. that. So, uh, as a matter of speaking, just because they have thousands of riders, they're not going to get these riders for free, you know. They yeah. also pay 80, 90, 100 bucks to their rider. So, right. when you build your menu, when you start a brand, you have to understand that the delivery cost is going to be at least 100 bucks an order. If you build a high high ticket size brand, say, if you have ticket size is 600 bucks or 700 bucks, you can probably negotiate a lower commission with, you know, with the matter of speaking, because... Mm -hmm. Their their delivery cost is the same whether you know order is a three hundred bucks or six hundred bucks, right? But if you are into a low ticket size, uh, you, if you are running a low ticket size brand, then the deliver then the commission is going to be high for sure. Then you have to have a markup uh, for the right. end. But yeah, and not long, long term, long term, uh, no direct orders are not happening. Forget uh, long term, nobody is going to be ordering direct. All as it is right now, it's more than ninety five percent of the orders are through Zomato Swiggy. You oh, know? wow. Uh, I mean, uh, there are very few brands in some neighborhoods which deliver two to three kilometers only with their own riders. Right. But, uh, but those are very, very few handful, you know. So uh, if if you are going to uh, have, have delivery as your main business, you have to learn to, you know, uh, to uh, have, have, uh, have a margin for that. Understood. And plus the overhead, right? If you have your own riders fleet, who's going to manage that? You need somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Manage it's, it. it's, it's not possible to manage your own riders. Even though the riders, you can manage two, three riders if you're delivering two to three kilometers only. Hmm. But to understand that uh, the, the platforms are also getting you access to this large radius, uh, you know, and a massive number of customers who may not have discovered you otherwise. Right, right. So, in your opinion, these high commissions are totally worth it. 40, 60 percent? No, absolutely not. I don't think I don't think any platform is asking for 40 to 60 percent. I think the highest, as far as I know, is going. It is 27, 28 percent plus GST. Hmm. Um, I think uh, I've also heard about some kilometer-based uh, commission uh, that has come up uh, recently. I'm not fully aware about that, but right. um, uh, I think 25, 30 percent range is there for sure. If you're okay. a new brand. Uh, but uh, I think get into this, uh, get into a cloud kitchen only when you have a when you have a proper business model and you have you have a, a roadmap ready, you know, uh, for the first couple of years that oh I plan to have two or three or four cloud kitchens and this is the, this is my price point, this is what I'm paying Zomato. Right. Don't start a brand 
uh, and then uh, then complain about commissions. First, figure out what commissions are being offered to your menu. Mm -hmm. If the commission offered is not the same for every brand, they first see your menu and then they offer the commission. Uh, what okay. is the contract? So figure out what your costs are and then get into the cloud kitchen if you, if it seems viable. Right, and obviously, like you said, there's a there's room for negotiation there. Yeah, of course, room for negotiation is there, but typically that's only for a higher ticket size, uh, you know, a brand nowadays. Right, right. Or if, or if you get a, or, or if you get a franchisee of, a, of an established brand, then of course you get access to their lower commissions. You know, they have better than negotiation. Mm -hmm. Right. See, see, if somebody is going to somebody has um, twenty cloud kitchens or twenty outlets, they are obviously going to have better terms with the aggregators, right, compared to. One. It's like you go to the market, you buy one kg tomato, or you buy uh, 500 kg tomato. <laughs> what are the chances that you will get 1 kilo or 500 kilo? Yeah, yeah. Two so, different models, but yes, I get your point. Yeah, I, I hope that answers your question, Janak. I think Nitin has a couple of questions that we've already answered in our conversation. One is around not having enough delivery riders or delivery riders busy. And uh, what is the solution? I don't think there's any solution there. You just have to wait, wait it out. Till riders become no, I mean, uh, yeah you can't do you can't do much about it i i understand you can't do much about it uh but i think just be available on both the platforms because chances are riders are not, not available on one platform but the other platform may have riders so ah. uh, make sure your brand your your strategy is you know solid for both the platforms okay i have seen that a lot of brands you know only go, uh, end up working they are live on both the platforms but they end up working primarily with only one one platform some people are pro Swiggy, some some restaurants are pro Zomato, and they right. don't give attention to the other platform, which is a okay. huge mistake because if a customer wants to order from you and Zomato says riders are not available, at least you know you should you should have a, a good page and a good listing, good hygiene on the Swiggy as well. You know? Right, right. Yeah, because as a consumer, if I see one restaurant doesn't have riders, I usually find riders on the other platform. See, and and also you you know the uh, the cust seventy percent customers on these platforms are unique to the platform. I think if Zomato doesn't have riders, thirty percent customers will may go to Swiggy to place the order from the same restaurant, but seventy percent will drop out. So you have to you have to make sure your brand is strong on both the platforms so that you know if if they uh, so you uh, reduce your risk of you know uh, a rider issue on one platform. Understood. Makes dono sense. Ka ekta, dono ka ekta rider now that only happens when it's when it's like a, there's a rain or you know some sort of a, a one-off you know incident. Usually, aisa nahi hota hai kabhi. Right. I, we've seen Noida mein, uh, for a couple of months there was a strike with Swiggy riders, but Zomato is doing well. You know, same way you know Gurgaon. I think uh, in August or September, I think Zomato had had major issues with with uh, riders, but Swiggy was doing good. So you know. Altogether, if you have, uh, I mean, you know, if your market share of these uh, platforms is say 55, 45, or 60, 40, you should be okay. Awesome. So, uh, maybe have a plan B as always, right? Always be. Yeah, maybe just plan A and plan B both on our sheet. There's no plan C, unfortunately, right? <laughs> now, third aggregator. And yeah. uh, people are not going to order from your own website. It's very hard. It's not worth the effort, I feel. Okay. Uh, yeah, even the experience, right? You will not going to be able to deliver the same experience on the app, uh, the same See, as. Uh, I mean, now now there are those direct platforms like Dot Pay, Thrive, and you know who uh, who uh, help you build your own website. While their UI for website is fabulous, like you know you can order through Dot Pay or uh, Thrive very quickly, almost as fast as Zomato or Swiggy. Mm -hmm. But rider rider uh, logistics issues are still there. I think 20, 30 percent orders don't get delivered on time, or one or 10 percent orders even get cancelled because uh, pay and Five don't have their own riders. You know, they are dependent on uh, third-party aggregators like uh, third-party logistics like Dunzo, Shadowfax, Vfast. You know, and uh, those riders uh, they, they are doing so many other things that food is not a priority for them. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You typically don't think of them as food delivery partners unless you're sending it from home to home. Yeah, and then I mean they they don't uh, talk to the customer. Not all of them talk to their customer, you know, in the in the right way, or you know. Um, so it's yeah, the experience is not end user experience is not that great, you know, with these uh, third party logistics currently. I hope mm -hmm. that eventually, you know, it improves. And uh, I mean, I've been hearing so much about ONDC and you know um, mm -hmm. uh, more platforms coming up. I hope eventually, you know, the experience is great for the end user. So these uh, uh, ONDC can also be, you know, 
um, a big enough uh, player as a third option. Right. Uh, Mr. Shah has a question. What ads give more ROI? Segmented ads or full day ads with all the items in the menu? I don't, I, I don't think you can select items in the menu, mm -hmm. uh, specific items in the menu on ads. But uh, segmented ads are great. Uh, but which segment works for you, you have to first, you know, figure out uh, with, you know, some trial and error. There are those uh, customer segment, uh, customer segments in Zomato, like UM, MM, and LA, or, or P1, P2, P3 in Swiggy. Uh, then there are meal uh, meal time based segments. Some brands, like a kebab brand, you know, you rather advertise only during dinner time. Because if mm. your ad is full of the day, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., the ad is not going to give you a good ROI, you know, if it's a yeah. ad of a kebab restaurant. If it's a pizza restaurant, you know, um, uh, late night ads do great, uh, have great ROI. You know, uh, dinner and late yeah. night ads have great ROI, you know, because people tend to order burgers or pizzas, you know, um, uh, a lot post 10 p.m. <laughs> Explains uh, our uh, obesity issues and <laughs> rushing to the gyms. Uh, but jokes aside, I, I think uh, one more question that came around this ROI is, uh, hang on a minute. yeah, so I think Shubham had, had this question, right? Uh, what is the ideal ROI to be profitable on Zomato and Swiggy? Sorry? What is the ideal ROI to be profitable on Zomato and Swiggy? Um, okay, so I think uh, uh, you have to first understand that ROI is not the same as ROAS. Yes, you know ROI is the order orders you go, you got from uh, from the ad from the specific ads, right? But to be profitable, uh, you don't you're not looking at only the uh, revenue from the ads. You're also looking at the organic revenue. You know sometimes right. like, a, a, like a low AOV, low low ticket size brand may give you a, a, a ROI of two point five or three, which is not that great by itself. But uh, if the repeat rate is good, you know over a period of three months. You know, with the same ad budget, your business is compounding, you know, uh, you know, from 100 to 250 to 200, you know, with the same ad budget of 20 rupees. So uh, okay. that uh, that 20 rupees uh, ad is getting you 40, 50 rupees of business. But that 40, 50 eventually, asta asta repeat customers ad karte karte is becoming 100, 150, 200, 250, you know. So eventually, right. from four months down the line, your budget remains at 20, 25, but your business mm -hmm. goes, from, goes to 300 or 350. That means your ROI might be only be 2.5 or 3 from the ad, but ROAS, which means uh, you know, uh, return on ad spend, revenue on ad spend, right. is probably you know 12 to 15 times, which is healthy. Okay. Because you know your long term, long term, uh, five to seven percent ad spend is you know is normal. You know it's it, that's uh, that's considered very healthy. If it's anything less than seven percent, is pretty healthy. Awesome. I think Shubham, that's a very clear cut answer for you to benchmark. Uh, Johnny has a question. Where do you see cloud kitchens in five years from now? Uh, I heard that Swiggy and Zomato have started their own kitchen in many areas. Won't that affect us? Not Zomato. Swiggy had, I think they still have some brands of their own, but yeah. I think their intent is to only fill in the demand, you know, yeah. because, um, because ultimately if people, a lot of people are searching on Swiggy for, let's say, you know, um, uh, momos or you know uh, let's say uh, Rajma Chawal or whatever mm. in the particular yeah. area but there are not enough good players serving that then obviously the Swiggy's customer is dropping out right and they are uh, and the, their intent is to bring more and more people to the platforms right Swiggy is a matter don't compete with you know ordering uh, with uh, going out to a restaurant they compete with uh, you know ordering in or cooking at home yes so if they don't have good enough, good enough options in every area good enough food options then people are going to continue to, you know, uh, cook at home, uh, you yeah. know. So obviously, uh, business. So long, term, long term, I don't think that it's not their business model to be running their own brands. Uh, yeah. And honestly, the market is so huge that it doesn't affect, I mean, hazar brands or ek hazar ek brand, or how does it matter? Right, right. So Johnny, don't, don't have to worry anytime soon. I you think. don't have to worry about their own brands as, as such, yeah. you know. I think worry about uh, getting high repeat rate from your own customers. Yeah, just just keep at it. Ensure service excellence, delivery excellence. I mean, so. Delhi has thirty thousand restaurants. You know, <laughs> whichever zone you are in, you are competing with two thousand restaurants. Yeah. Whether two thousand or twenty one hundred, will it really matter? <laughs> Excuse me. 
Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's one way of looking at it. We had a very interesting question, um, probably unrelated slightly, but this came from our community, right? So we have a community called FNB Growth, uh, just for food and beverage experts, right? Yeah. We'll drop the link to that community in the chat. But the question was that, uh, uh, how do you approach creation of a brand image, Cloud Kitchen, a specific to Cloud Kitchen, when you're venturing into the fast food market, you're bootstrapped and you have to compete with the likes of McDonald's, Burger King's, uh, look, if you if you really want to compete well, then uh, cloud kitchen uh, purely cloud kitchen is very it's very hard to build a brand on, on yeah. you know. Um, we in fact uh, we started on cloud in 2019, and we, just as the brand you know started picking up, COVID happened, so we didn't have the option to expand it offline you know at that time. Yeah. Uh, so the next four, five or six outlets you know were all on the cloud, but we uh, opening a physical outlet has had been on our mind for the last two years you know. Mm. Because uh, you know it it, uh, it improves your customer acquisition. Um, you know, uh, McDonald's and Burger King will eat you eat you alive if you're only on the cloud. You're not going to get any visibility oh. compared to a McDonald's or a Burger King. Yeah, yeah. Have the, all the platforms they first give priority to the national brands. You know, a certain amount of uh, you know visibility is uh, is uh, put aside for national brands like McDonald's, Domino's, Burger King. You know. Mm -hmm. um, the likes. Then the next comes the city brands, which have which have 20, 30 outlets in a city, like Haldiram, for example, you know, uh, Kevinters, or you know those, uh, which are the uh, the heroes of that city. Then bacha kuchha visibility jo bachta hai, that yeah. is for people who are advertising. Now, okay. if, if you are a single outlet with a limited 20, 30 thousand rupee monthly budget, how are you going to compete with with all of that? You know? Right. So the only way you can is by having a physical outlet, a chota sa cafe, open a small cafe or a small 15, 20 seater place in your neighborhood, be the hero of your neighborhood, you know, be the star of your neighborhood that yeah. after two kilometer radius, mein, people swear by you. Aapse better koi hai hi nahi two kilometer radius mein. Yeah. And then build on from there, you know, yeah. uh, because if you have your uh, say 50, 50, 70, 100 orders a day from your organic customers, the mm -hmm. algorithm of the matter, Swiggy is going to also going to start pushing you, you know, more and more organically because you are bringing traffic to their platform. You know, if you have no leverage, if you have no traffic, uh, you know, that your brand is getting to the platform, why should the algorithm push you? Makes sense. Makes sense. And if, you're, if, you're, if your conversion ratio is not good enough, Malab, as a matter of showing your listing 100 times, but you're only getting five orders out of those 100 uh, menu, menu visits versus mm -hmm. And which is converting uh, 15 orders out of the 100 views, which is the uh, restaurant, which is the, what restaurant is Zomato likely to show more? Obviously. So, okay. So how does Zomato take that into account? As in, is it because of your offline presence is affecting your online orders and Zomato tends to push that up higher? Zomato also... Absolutely. What I'm saying is that if you are a strong brand offline, hmm. like, you know, in your neighborhood, there's a restaurant that you really like, you know, you know that yeah. restaurant outside of Zomato Swiggy universe, you know, now, uh, when you want to order from them, you you will go to Zomato and will search for that restaurant, right? Yes, yes. And sometimes, uh, you know, 10, 20% customers who may not be a Zomato user, they'll become a Zomato user uh, and they'll place their first order with that restaurant. So mm -hmm. Zomato Swiggy also take into account how many new users were brought in by a particular brand. Interesting, okay. So, uh, you know, the first order placed by any new user on, on the platform uh, you know, that gives brownie points to that, uh, that restaurant. Okay. That's phenomenal. And, That's and, and, and uh, how, how can, how can a brand get a new customer to Zomato Swiggy without being physically present? Right. So pure, and pure cloud, if you're a pure cloud kitchen, your only mode of, uh, interacting with the customer is Zomato Swiggy. Yeah. Which means yeah. you are targeting existing users of Zomato Swiggy. Yeah. Right. 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 I, I think Ashish Jami had a question around this. How do you create organic traffic from Zomato and Swiggy? So I think Ashish, that answers your question to a certain extent. Um, just looking at the time, and I know we're a little over, but there are a few interesting questions that I do want to put uh, to you, Sumit. Right? Sure. Um, one is, uh, uh, this is from Ronak. Right? Ronak is saying that uh, my pricing on online platforms are high compared to dine-in prices due to commissions and mark many other factors. Sometimes customers pay using Zomato dine-in and then they get bid discounts on the base price, which is a loss. How do you deal with that? Uh, Ronak saying they started adding a 12, 12.5% 12 uh, cover charge on the bill. 
but customers don't seem to be happy with it. How, how do you deal with that? Are you, are you talking about the Zomato Dine-In and Swiggy Dine-In now? The Swiggy Dine-Out and Zomato Dine-In? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So, I, I mean, I feel that prices should not be different. I think ultimately it affects your brand image. Yeah. That, you know, uh, even 5% customers could be like, okay, you are, uh, you, are you know, uh, pulling a fast one on them. Uh, ultimately, word of mouth, long term, two years, three years down the line, enough people will know that okay, this brand, you know, is not very, you know, credible. Yeah. Uh, your prices absolutely have to be the same on all platforms. They cannot be different. What can be different is the offer that you're giving. Offer yeah. is you, you can give a different offer to direct customers. You can offer give a different uh, different offer to you know Zomato or Dine Out or wherever you want. You know, so so uh, you want to have dynamic pricing. Use the use the offers as a way to you know to to do to do, uh, do that. Don't change the menu prices. You know, for different platforms. I mean, it's really really not good. Um, your commission yeah. is Zomato Swiggy pay. Up in team char percent, five percent, so uh, you know, uh, give a better discount on direct, uh, you know, if you want to have a better, have a better offer on you know, paying through UPI. If you're giving a 10 percent on Zomato or Dine Out, yeah, 15 percent on payment through UPI, if you want yeah. to, yeah, and that Ulti comes directly to your account. Ultimately, because ultimately, if you are a if you uh, if you negotiate well. You can keep your Zomato Swiggy dine out commission also at very low, just slightly above credit cards. You know, it's not uh, you can negotiate it well. Yeah, but okay. I mean, for existing restaurants, I think discount is a better method rather than changing prices on different platforms. Yeah, yeah, because I I personally get very annoyed when I see this is the Zomato price is different and the offline price. Is yeah, yeah. It, it, you you know it, it breaks the trust. You don't. Yeah. You, uh, I mean, I mean, you really your product has to be so good for somebody yeah. to ignore that sort of a, you know um, uh, that difference in pricing. Even then, you know, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Fun, hundred percent. Yeah. And cover charge, service charge. In my experience, they you know last three years. Uh, I mean, people just don't like any any surcharges. Whatever it is, tax scale, our menu price here or tax. That's that's the only two things that should be there. Yeah, be, be transparent. Whatever, whatever surcharge, you most of have built it into into your menu price. Yeah. Ultimately, they may not they may not even tell you on your face. But when they see the bill, it's like, "Ek surcharge hai, yare service charge hai, mm -hmm. charge hai, they are less likely to come back to your restaurant. Oh God, that's painful. All right, yeah. just a couple of more questions, Sumit, uh, and I, the questions are pouring. Um, so what we'll do is we'll 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 find a way of people to send these questions and we can respond to them in um, probably later after this webinar. But just sure. a couple of last questions, right? So Sriram has a question that uh, he has a cloud kitchen for breakfast and lunch, average orders of 60, 65 per day, average okay. rating of 4.6 on both Swiggy and Zomato. Great. Great. Um, I have a slot by CPC on both platforms, but okay. not giving any discounts. What should be done to increase my average orders to 80, 85? Uh, I mean, I think uh, I can't answer the question without knowing whether you're a physical brand also or you're a completely cloud brand. Uh, right. if, if you are a cloud brand, then uh, do some sort of a offer for a week and see what is the change in your funnel and how your ROI changes with the discount. Hmm. Uh, eventually, you know, um, thoda sa discount uh, helps you, will help you reduce your ad budget or increase your ROI you know, in the long run. If you are mm -hmm. a physical brand, then uh, I think um, I mean uh, then of course you can let let go of uh, uh, these uh, discounts. The the other way is to um, do some sort of a you know offline promotion you know mm -hmm. through, uh, in your store or through Instagram or you know wherever you are most visible to your customers, and then right. get the, uh, hopefully you'll get results online as well. Awesome. Uh, Naveen has another question. Uh, what is your feedback on brand? Feedback on brand on search ads on Zomato. A uh, boss. It's called huh, B O S S. Uh, uh, brand on search ads. Uh, okay. uh, I don't think it's worked for us. I mm. can't speak for everybody else, but it didn't work for us. We are not doing much of it. I think for about try kiya tha, a couple two three months back. Mm. Uh, it didn't really work for for us. Okay. And uh, yeah, last question from the group is, uh, what about menu prices for delivery using Zomato Swiggy versus your own menu? Uh, speaking only should for be the same. Yeah, I highly right. recommend it should be the same. Yeah, you should not yeah. have different prices. Right. Awesome. Oh, this is phenomenal, Sumit. I mean, so much. I have I have learned personally so much, and the, the delivery world is so complicated. 
but before I let you go, I just want to know if if somebody wants to reach out to you on LinkedIn or Insta or Twitter, where can you be found? What's the best way to reach out? Please reach out to me on LinkedIn. I can search my name and uh, yeah, you will find the profile. Awesome, awesome. Two questions, fun uh, rapid fire questions before we let everybody go. Uh, which is your favorite restaurant in the whole world? Mine? Yeah. Uh, I love going to the China Kitchen at Hyatt. That's uh, it's absolutely all time favorite. The last fifteen years, amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, we go. I think we frequent uh, that restaurant the most. I think once every two months at least. Wow. Okay. Um. Uh, and uh, who else would you like to see on this show? Right. Uh, who else I would like to see on the show? I, I mean, I would definitely like to see. Uh, you know. Uh, all these uh, big chains, uh, you know, uh, either uh, some somebody from McDonald's or Domino's, because yeah. he's killing it on Zomato, you know. I mean, it's yeah. it's. Uh, I mean, of course, they are they are not completely cloud brands. They are obviously they have their restaurants as well. But McDonald's, I've, I've been hearing great things about their growth story on Zomato over the last two three years. They are they are they are doing like so well. So I want to know, you know, how exactly you know, I want to learn from them for sure. Awesome. We'll try and get them for you on the show. And uh, thank you everyone for joining in. It's been a blast.